got from the parents, you got to get rid of because this stuff is poisonous. Or it's toxic or it's very good. Some of the stuff you receive from your parents is really good stuff. So your parents taught you how to live and how not to live. They showed you how to live and how not to live. They made missteps and they were, they were not perfect. They had, they had stuff going on. We can't imagine what, what our parents were going on when we were children. But when you heard the news over and over and over, like when I was a child, it was all Walter Cronkite was on the air. It was the Vietnam War. And he kept saying, and that's the way it is. And here he is, right? He's got on a trench coat. This is Walter Cronkite. He's supposed to be in Vietnam. They're showing palm trees in the back, right? He's supposed to be the greatest newsman in the world. He's got on a trench coat. And I'm asking my father, I said, Dad, how come the man, his name is Walter Cronkite? Is anybody else ever named Cronkite? What kind of name is that? You see what I'm saying? Crown Kite. It's like the, he's the crown. He flies the highest. He knows the most. And he's the king of the news. Right. But he's always moving the paper and always moving the mic back and forth, which is causing hypnotism because he's causing a state of consciousness to go between the conscious and the subconscious. He's creating a theta state. He's taking you into illusion. Right. He's taking you into the fake state where, you know, there's cognitive dissonance. What they're showing you and what you're hearing is differing events that you begin to take that in as real because it's on television. You're being entrained. So my question to my father was because. I didn't, I, you know, I was always trying to figure things out. I said, well, why does he have a trench coat? Isn't a trench coat worn in the winter when it's really cold? He's got this thing buttoned all the way up. Isn't it like 120 degrees in Vietnam? This is because he was in a newsroom, right, with a green screen or a blue screen or whatever behind him, whatever they used back then. And we thought this was real. So we were reacting and what was being put in our programming every day, every night, six o'clock news, seven o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news. People felt it was real because those emotions that they gave you on the screen, you programmed as a child as being real. You didn't know the difference. You didn't know. So the average adult is living life thinking that you're grown, but you have the conclusions and the ideas and the ideals of a child. You can see how people act. A lot of times people act very childish about things. You get upset about something. You have no real proof. But somebody told you it was real and they said it with a lot of emotion. Well, you like the, you know, we're, we're used to things coming as a lot of emotion because the preacher had a lot of emotion. You got all emotional and everything at church. And oh boy, you know, folks is falling out and speaking in tongues and folks got saved. And you know what I'm saying? They had to carry Bessie May out because, you know, she got, you know, she, she got the Holy Ghost. All of that stuff, that emotion became programmed in us and it seemed real. It was real. Whether it was actually what was happening in the spirit world, the child got that stuff programmed deep in us. So when somebody speaks in a certain way that reminds us of that, it's real. It's not factual, but it seems real. So we are living life as adults based on the conclusions of children. And we act and react based on the perception that we have given, been given, and keep giving ourselves. You could break all that. You could break all these spells. People do it all the time. But you got to be ready to be a spell breaker. You see? It's like even eating. People eat a lot of times because every event that you had, right, that was about celebration was about eating this food. And most of it was not good food. It wasn't even food half the time. But that's love. That's what love is about. Love is you bring food to the event. So you remember the food. You remember all this. And that's why you got to do a Thanksgiving dinner. You got to go because that's love. That's family. It's almost sacrilegious for you not to eat and go to the Thanksgiving meal. Even though the Thanksgiving, what Thanksgiving is about is a deep set of events that really goes against your survival. What it represented, it was not for you, maybe. It was about thanks taking. Folks was taking stuff. You know, you talking about Thanksgiving. It was thanks taking for somebody. Who did the pre who, you know, what did the turkey represent? But to you, the turkey represents the love of grandma and everybody coming together. You see, so these events, these holidays and things are programmed into us as children. Thanks. I mean, come on, look, look at Valentine's Day. That's all about love. I mean, I got I had drama one time because 
I missed out on the Valentine's Day dinner. I was supposed to take my girl to Valentine's Day. And, you know, I, I had a gig I had to do. I was more excited about the gig than Valentine's Day. Do you know how, what drama I had? Because I didn't bring the flowers and the candy and do the whole Valentine's Day thing. Oh, man. What love is and you know, the, the definition of love and hate and what is family, what is a friend, all these things are programmed into us, but they're not natural. They're not necessarily that. That is just the idea that's been programmed through repetition deep in our subconscious minds. So if you do something, if somebody does something and it seems like something that happened a long time ago or something that you heard about a long time ago that had a lot of emotion, you act out. My highest choice is that I'm being clear. This is a challenging subject to, to talk about because it lets us know that we are not totally in control, and we think we are. The ego says that I'm in control. I know who I am. But who you are is a conglomerate. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a bunch of stuff, file cabinets and file cabinets of information. It's just like, okay, lavender, lavender essential oil. When you smell a lavender essential oil, you calm down instantly as soon as you smell it. Why? Because programmed into your subconscious, the piece that you got from your grandparents and ancestors said that lavender, when they laid out in the lavender field or put lavender in their pillow or, you know, put lavender in their bath or drank lavender tea, it calmed them down. So you automatically calm down because that program is very strong in your cellular structure. You have receptors on your cell that are looking for lavender. There are receptors on your cells that are looking to receive everything. Each receptor on your cell is looking for a certain thing. There's a certain receptor looking for sugar. There's a certain receptor that just smells chocolate. There's billions and billions of receptors on your cell that are picking up this, this information and storing it into your system. Most of your memory is in your tissue. The issue is in the tissue. Your issues are in your tissues. It's the, it's the, it's the, the cellular memory. For instance, did you know crying is good for the soul? Why is that, Doc? Because when you cry, when they take tears and put them under the microscope, they see these little small pieces of, they look like hairs. They're called dendrites. Dendrites are broken off little nerve endings. When you cry about something, let's say it's something that is grief, it's sadness, somebody's passed away. There's tissue in your body that's holding on to the memory of that event or that person or that thing. When you cry, a really good cry, the little